say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Oh, well, hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hi, how are you? You look doing? ravishing as usual. Well, thank you. You look pretty good yourself. Well, thank you. Pretty good. <laughs> I mean, you look pretty really good. good. Your hair looks nice. I like how it's growing out. It's really nice, Barry. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know what? Uh, we see fish in front of us. Mm -hmm. Now we're back on the deck because we have a grill and we got a burner out here, so on and so forth. And it's nice tonight. It it's, is it's nice. It's kind of warm, but it's not humid. We have company tonight, which we're known to do every now and then. We have Roddy and Lisa over. Now, not too long ago, we ate at their house, mm -hmm. and she made a pork. Amazing. It was, it was really good. Don't tell her, though. Yes. Is that really good? Anyway, and I was trying to get the secret, and she's, I said, would you share with us? Because we, if we have something that's really, really good, we want to share with you, we want to share right. with us, fantastic. And she said it's easy. I'd give two like thumbs up if I could. Now, this is striper. Striper, striped bass. Okay. Some people call them rock bass, call them all sorts of things, but really, it's a striped bass. So these are fish that are saltwater, Okay. You can catch them off. Up. People catch them in Chesapeake Bay. They catch them in California. But they will come in and back and forth out of um, freshwater. Hmm. Years ago, the Department of Fish and Wildlife went to Santee Cooper. Hope Carlton, one of the first hosts for Kentucky Field, was one of the guys who went down and caught them by rod and reel, put them in a truck. Really? Brought them back to Kentucky. Is That's that not how we cool? got striper. That's how we got striper. Okay. Now we have them down below the dams. Um, we have them in the lakes. But in Cumberland, you got a bumper crop. Now, I was supposed to go fishing with Roddy the other day. That got ruined, didn't you know, it? We talked about that yeah. last week. Came home at 10.30 after a birthday party. I was supposed to get up at 2. Right. We had sheep looking at us. No dogs. Millie, gone. Maggie, gone. My trip? Got ruined. Gone. But he got to go without you. He got to go without me. He, well, the important thing is right here, the right. fish. So my goal today is now Roddy and Lisa aren't huge fish fans. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do is make them really enjoy striper. Now some people say, well striper, it's a little strong, this, that, or the other. I'm going to make them something I think they're going to like. Restaurant quality grade striper. Yeah. Right here. And it's fairly easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this big bag of striper. I'm going to let you open that, Mrs. Farmer. And I'm going to cut me some wow. little squares like restaurant size. And these are filleted by Morgan's Guide Service out of Jamestown, Kentucky. Here's Jeremy, is the son, who took these cats out. Now look at some pictures here, if you want to do this yourself. Here's some pictures of Roddy and his son Jackson with their beautiful fish that they caught. And now we get dinner. Now we get dinner. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. That's a nice fish. Now, that's good looking fish. The thing that's strong on a striper is the red meat. And it looks like Jeremy did a really good job of taking care of that situation. You know what? I'm going to do four pieces. Let's do one for everybody. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of flour. Okay. You, start, you know where we're going, don't yeah. you, Ms. Farmer? All right, do you remember the recipe that I brought home to you from Maria? That was amazing. The nice lady who has who had the uh, Greek... She's Greek, too. That's she's why it's so good. Yeah, that's why it was good. That's right. And she was down around Radcliffe at the time. I think she's moved since then. But she had some wonderful, a wonderful fish recipe that was a rosemary fish recipe. Remember that that's with the really red wine good. vinegar? So you're doing it kind of like that? Uh, not really. No? Okay. <laughs> but... That kind of inspired this recipe. So what we're gonna do is take some olive oil, we're gonna put in this pan, and we're just gonna dredge that lightly in the flour, salt and pepper, and just drop that in there. And we're gonna put these, I don't know, two or three minutes per side to get them nice and brown. Don't you think it's a good idea to say, okay, if you've taken a deer or you've taken a fish, now here's a recipe that you can use to make this taste really good. Right. And that's where my old buddy Raul Dupree came in handy. French chef who showed me a lot of cool stuff. 
That's what you want it to look like. Isn't that beautiful? Look how, isn't that pretty? Yeah. You don't want to overdo it. You want it to have some moisture inside. You want it to be flaky, but you don't want it to be underdone. All right, now we're going to take this off and set it aside. It's still going to cook internally while it's sitting over here. All those? Shallot and garlic. We did two large shallots. And three cloves. And three cloves, because we like our garlic. Do you smell that? Smells good. And again, you don't want to burn your garlic because it gets bitter. Now we're just going to get that nice translucent. You know when it's done. It smells good. Doesn't it though? Mm-hmm. Look at that fish sitting over there. That'll look good just by itself. It does itself. look good. All right, now we're going to take a half a cup of wine. Stir that in a little bit. Let that reduce. Okay, Mrs. Farmer, if you don't mind getting me about a half a cup of lemon juice prepared. All right, All right at this point, when that's reduced down and see most of the wine is cooked out of there, yeah. we're going to take that other half a cup of wine. We're going to put it in there. Let's put a little salt and pepper All right. for flavor. We're going to take about a half a cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice. That smells good. All right, so now we're going to reduce this down. Now, all the little scrapies that were in the pan, we left them in there. Those are good. That's good stuff. Now we're going to come back with just a tad, yes, of your favorite hot sauce. You got to have boom, hot sauce, don't you? Boom, just a bit. So it does something. I don't okay. know what it is. And some more sister sa sauce, some more sister sauce, more <laughs> sister char, a tad of that. Okay. All right, after that has reduced just a hair, we're going to put one half cup Yum. of heavy whipping cream. No calories. That's good. Look at that. And how about the butter? Must have no calories. Two sticks of butter. Wow, are you serious? Yep. And here's what we're going to do, Mrs. Farmer, if you right. will. Take about one tablespoon at a time. We're just going to start melting that in here. Okay. This is not rich in creamy or anything. No. It's a little bit at a time. Now we're going to prepare some tomatoes. We're just going to dice those real small for our final presentation here. All right, Nikki, if you will, a little more butter. Okay. Keep bringing that in. We're almost ready. And now we're going to take these two pieces of fish right here. Dip, dip it in there. You love it, Lisa? Some... No, I like it. Did you get I'm surprised. Wow. You're surprised? Because I don't like fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try it, Nikki. It's been a while since we've had this. Okay, so you're not a fish eater. I'm not a fish eater. So Roddy comes packing all his fish back and says, just take it to Tim. That's exactly what we did. <laughs> That's what you did. But you, when's the last time you ordered fish? Tell me the truth. Oh, I can't remember. 30 years? Seriously? Yeah. What was it? Like Long John Silver's or something? Um, I couldn't even remember. I've seen Roddy order it, but he's picky. He yes. wants it good. So I asked you off camera what, you, what on a scale from 1 to 10. I think it's a 10. I thought it was delicious. I would eat that. I would eat that frequently. Think about that, Nikki. Wow. Non-fish eater. All right. That's fabulous. It was delicious. I love to fix stuff for people who like, and Roddy's standing over here shaking his head agreeing. He's not a huge fish eater, but what did you get out of that? What, what's the taste you got out of that? What's, um, what lingers in your mouth? You don't have lemon. a heavy, you don't have a heavy fish taste or no. oily taste. The lemon. The lemon. That's the not a bad thing. Lemon. No, it was delicious. Now, last time I had a really good aftertaste from pork was at your house. Nice. Now here's what happened. I asked her for the recipe, and I didn't think. I thought she might not give it up. She had that look like, should I? Should I not? It's just so easy. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, I think you were, I think you were thinking about holding out. I really do. No, I wasn't. You weren't? You were no, going to share it? It's right. just so easy. All right. Pay attention because we love our food and sometimes we go to somebody else's house and they fix something that's spectacular. Pay attention. This is spectacular. Now, the thing is, there's a little time and you marinate, you're going to put your marinade together. We've already got the, the end product, right. the pork loins. They're, they're marinated and done. Right. But show us what you do and how long, how long do you let so them So I will marinate anywhere from 24 to 48 hours, depending on how much time I have. How long have these gone? Um, these have gone 36 gotcha. hours. Okay. So we'll do about a cup of olive oil. All right. And you typically do two I typically two do time. four. Four? Yes, because oh, I wow. usually have company. Right. So I usually do four. I think we put a herd on that last. We ate it all. <laughs> did you do four that time? I did. And we ate all those? We did. 
And then I do, you, I usually do about a half a cup of soy sauce, but you can do three quarters if you like it more soy tasting. That's, I, I remember the aftertaste and there was nothing that was, that was um, really unpleasant. That soy is nice and salty. Yep. We do three tablespoons of brown sugar. There's your sweet. Which we have already measured out. We do about a tablespoon of either tarragon or rice vinegar. I had rice in my cabinet. How much? Just a tablespoon. Tablespoon, okay. Yep. I'm just guessing. There's no wrong, right or wrong. And then one package of zesty Italian good seasonings. So just a dry dressing. Yep, just the dry dressing. And I usually get all the air out before I put my pork in and I just kind of mix it up with my hands to make sure that that brown sugar is not clumped up. And then I put my pork tenderloins in and lay it flat in the refrigerator for 24 to 48 hours. One thing that I was amazed about, Roddy did this on the Big Green Egg. We're gonna do yes. it on the grill. You can do it either, either way. It was on a really, 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 really hot grill. And I kept thinking, man, he's searing the fire out of this. Is this gonna be burnt? But in the end, the middle was really Oh tender. my goodness. Yeah. And now they're saying pork, you can do a pork loin, is, they used to say 160, 170, now it's 150. So you want some pink. Yes, we there. want some pink. Oh, this Make is it fabulous. tender. I'm kind of excited, I'm just telling you. Yeah, I am too. So we had our appetizer. Now let's, uh, let's get Nikki to bring this over, the finished product, and let's see what it looks like. This is 36 hours. 36 hours. Of just chilling. Yep, just me Like a villain. Yep. And here's what they look like. Here's what they look like. Oh, I'm kind of fired up, I gotta tell you. And now Roddy goes over here with a 20,000 degree grill, and we got a long set of tongs because it gets hot. It gets hot. And I was really shocked at how hot this was, but man, I'm telling you, don't be afraid to get your grill too hot or your big green egg or however you're gonna cook it this. It's delicious. Well, thank you so much for sharing this recipe. I thought I was gonna have to like, I don't know, <laughs> threaten you or something. <laughs> yeah, interrogation with a big bright light. <laughs> One of the things I like to do with this is I like to put it on as the grill is warming up. And this marinade is real likely to, to flare up flare up a lot. Flip this over. That already looks delicious. So I like to flip it over a lot because that way you don't get it too dark with the bark, so to speak. And we'll paint it a couple times. And I just put as much of this as I can stand on here because it does it, it only makes the taste better. And the problem is always when you put it on that it, it flares up the grill. So but we're not scared of a flare. We're not scared of the flare. Now you've done this a lot of times, so you kind of look at it and know we're done here. It, what you want is you want it to be dark for about half, and then you want to have kind of a, a pink mm -hmm. interior. You don't want it red, bright red, you want it pink. And that way it's still juicy and it's nice. And it'll cook after you take it off. It still cooks for a few minutes afterwards. Few minutes. But you don't want it to be brown all the way through, unless you like it. You know, some people like things well done, but most people prefer this kind of pork with just a little pink on the inside. Where is this from? This piece of meat comes from the psoas muscle. And so that's what filet mignon is in, in cows. But it comes from the spine, the, the, the front part of the spine, goes down the back of your abdomen and pelvis and hooks in to the lesser trochanter of which your you femur, know <laughs> which I know about, and it's, it's what lifts your muscle, your, your leg up, flexes your hip, and that's what this is. But that's always the prime cut, almost on, on any type any, of Any animal that that's considered the best cut. And the key to this is, is not necessarily the meat. You can have almost any cut of meat with it. The, the key is, is the marinade, and letting it, the longer you let it marinate, if you let it marinate 24 hours, it's good. If you let it marinate 48 hours, it's really good. I don't think we've ever done it longer than that. For, for 72, but it, it, it really is good the longer it sits in there. So here, all this time, I thought that I wasn't going to get the recipe, and now it sits here in front of us, and a bunch of other people. Everybody has it. This is really good. Everybody dig in. This is this is absolutely one of my favorite pork recipes now. And so this this was 36 hours, but you can let it go as much as 48, or if you wanted to go longer than that, you could, I guess. Yeah. Good job, Lisa. Good job, Roddy. Good job, Lisa. <laughs> good job, Timmy. Nick. Oh yeah, don't forget the fish. <laughs> the fish was you know good. That's surf and turf. It is surf and turf. I got to tell you, I'm not kidding you. Do yourself a favor. Fire your grill up. Do a marinade. Let it set. 
and you're going to have you a delicious meal. I'm losing light. Let's eat our dinner. I'm talking to my mouth full. Shouldn't do that. Thank you again, both. Oh, this was fun. Delicious stuff. Do yourself a favor. Now, it's a whole lot of fun to have friends over. Yes, it is. And to explore their favorites. Mm -hmm. And have them cook for us. I like that. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I like that. Every now and then. Have someone over and just sit down and let them cook. I like that. That was good. Yes, that it was. That was really important. It was good. So that was fun, but sometimes it's good to go visit folks. Right. And every now and then, in Lawrenceburg, it's close to us, mm -hmm. they have a chicken swap. I'm sure there's more chicken swaps out there. But that's a fun one. It's a fun one. <laughs> It's not just chickens. Mm -hmm. We need a rooster because right. if we decide to have some eggs that we want to be fertile, right. we have to have a rooster. And you it. like to hear it crow in the morning. I like to hear it crow. you got a problem with roosters. They have a problem with you. I don't know if it's your body language or what, but we wanted a nice rooster. So right. far, so good. Right. Because you've had some incidents right. where yeah, yeah. you were attacked. We also wanted some guineas because mm -hmm. like I love that noise. And they pick ticks out of the field. Yeah, that's a good idea. We've already got them back here, but let's show how we got them last Saturday at the Lawrenceburg Chicken Swamp. Today we're at the Lawrenceburg Chicken Swamp. I love this. You know what? If you listen here in a minute, you'll probably hear a rooster. There's one, I don't know if you heard it or not. But that's something I miss. You don't miss because you always get attacked by the rooster. I want a nice rooster. We're going to try to find a docile rooster or today. Or a little baby rooster. No, Millie likes, likes to play okay. with them really rough. We're looking for a rooster today and maybe some guinea fowl. I don't, they seem to be hard to find. We've had peacocks before. Right. I like peacocks. Goodness knows what we'll find. But I love this place. We've been here before. You've seen us here before. There's a big crowd out today. Let's go see what we can find. What might we go home with? Flowers. Flowers. <laughs> they have flowers too. You got I flowers did. last time. Yes, I did. All I right, let's go. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brothers. Got a frog in my throat. Day 
that the old man died ninety years without slumbering life seconds numbering Stop, walk, never to run again on the day that the old man died It rang an alarm in the dead of night An alarm that for years had been dumb And we knew that his soul was plummeting on its flight Desire of departure had come Still the clock kept its time with a soft and muffled chime We silently stood by its side Then it stopped once, never to run again On the day that the old man died Ninety years without slumbering Life seconds numbering It stopped once, never to run again On the day that the old man died Now again, folks have been asking, are you going to be at the fair? And the answer is yes, we will be. And we want to see you there. August yeah. 25th, that's Friday night. We're going to be there between 6 and 7. That'll be fun. So we hope to see their first 10 groups, I guess you could say, families, whatever. That's right. Get a free cookbook. How nice. How about that? I like that. Look forward to seeing you at the fair. Also, if you saw our recipes tonight, you saw something you like, you want to dig through a little bit, where would you find that, Mrs. Farmer? I would go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Would you really? I do. What would you find there? Gazillions? Gaz I heard bazillions. Bazillions, bazillions of recipes. Of recipes yes, that you good can ones. Find. They're all good. And videos of how to, so on and so forth. And also, if you would like to be our friend on Facebook, that's pretty easy to yes. do. All you got to do, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, hit like, and you can talk, discuss recipes. Tell us about how your grandma made it. Mm -hmm. Share ideas. It's a lot of fun. Now, it may take us a couple days to get back because a lot of times we're shooting and we're right. very busy. But we do try to reply as much as possible. And that wraps up this week, Mrs. Farmer. That's right. You know what that means? What does that mean? It means it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. We don't have anything to eat. <laughs> let's go out tonight. <laughs> okay, let's go to dinner. Okay. <laughs> To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to... CKY Canoe, Kentucky. Furniture World Superstore. Housewarmings. Lodge Cast Iron. Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.